Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and talk about the 3090 Ti. Basically, here's where you can find it in stock. Link should be down below. NVIDIA launches the RTX 3090 Ti, and here's where to find the stock. They've launched the 3090 Ti with an MSRP of 1999. We found the RTX 3090 Ti stock available in limited quantities in both the US and UK so far, with listings coming in thick and fast, though disappearing just as quickly. If you wanted to get your hands on the BF GPU refresh, below you'll find the retailers to start your search, as well as listing uh, listings we've been able to verify ourselves. So basically they go through it. They say in terms of the stock that's available now, Newegg is currently selling the 3090 Ti for the Win 3 for $21.49, for the Win 3 Ultra for $21.99, and they've seen Best Buy list the 3090 Ti Founders Edition on its website, though it's not available for order yet. It says coming soon. And then in the UK, you have the KFA, GeForce RTX 3090 Ti EX Gamer Overclock and the Pallet GeForce RTX 3090 Ti Game Rock for 1879 euro, as well as the Zotac Amp Extreme Hollow Edition, which I would probably avoid to be honest because their 3090 was terrible, so was their 3080 uh, for 1898.99. They do a plastic backplate on this, and it's just uh, I don't know if this one will have the same backplate. But I, I wouldn't really want to uh, pick that one up personally. We've seen a few listing from partners already, such as representation from EVGA, NO3D, and ASUS and MM, MSI. You can check for the pre-orders there. Basically, they have the listings in the U.S. at Best Buy, Newegg, and then in the U.K., they have it at overclockers.uk and CCL online. Check below. Now... There are some big glaring issues, which is power. So we're starting to get power information and reviews. I haven't watched all the reviews because frankly, I've been, you know, working essentially, but keep their tradition alive, keeping their tradition alive of launching a new graphics architecture every two years. This year, NVIDIA introduced its Ampere GPU. The Ampere GPU is built upon the foundation set by Turing. Termed as its biggest general leap, the NVIDIA Ampere GPUs excel compared to previous generations at everything. And blah, blah, blah. Let's get down here. So today we'll be taking a look at the NVIDIA RTX 3090 Ti 24 gigabyte graphics card, a monster of graphics cards featuring the full fat GA102 GPU. Turing wasn't just any graphics core, it was the graphics core that was to become the foundation of future GPUs. The future is realized now with the next generation consoles going deep in talks about ray tracing and AI assisted super sampling techniques. NVIDIA had a head start with Turing and its Ampere generation will only do things infinitely times better. The Ampere GPU does make, does many traditional things that would we would expect from a GPU, but at the same time also breaks the barrier when it comes to untraditional GPU operations. So it's pretty much covering, obviously, all the new technologies here. We're really not that interested in it. So let's get down to the 3090 Ti. Here we go. So 3090 Ti. Boom. And then the 3090. Now the 30, yeah, right here. Where is the 3090 Ti information? I thought this was going to have it, or did I open the wrong thing? Okay, here we go. At the heart of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti graphics card lies the GA102 GPU. The GA102 is the flagship gaming GPU and also the fastest gaming GPU that NVIDIA has produced. The GPU is based on Samsung's 8 nanometer custom process node designed specifically for NVIDIA and features a total of 28 billion transistors. It measures 628 millimeters squared, which makes it the second biggest gaming GPU ever produced right below the Turing TU-102 GPU. GPU, which powered the 2080 Ti and the Titan RTX. The new shader core on the Ampere architecture is 2.7 times faster. We're already all aware of that. For the GeForce RTX 3090, NVIDIA has enabled a uh, total of 84 SM units on its flagship, which results in the total of 10,752 CUDA cores. 
Uh, this talks about the 3090 having 450 watts. In terms of memory, the 3090 Ti comes packed with 24 gigabytes of memory, and that, uh, and that too, the next generation of GDDR6X design. With Micron's latest and greatest graphics memory dies, the RTX 3090 Ti can deliver GDDR6X memory speeds up to up to 21 gigabits per second. Now we did the math out of this because it's not actually yes, this is the fastest memory currently available, which obviously as GPU miners were super interested in. However, when we did the math for the total bandwidth, we were only about 10 mega hash a second over, or 10 to 20 mega hash a second over the 3090. So we were talking about 135 mega hash a second at peak. And the problem there, of course, is when we get into power consumption on this particular GPU, plus the cooling problems that you're gonna have. Now I covered in like a little short, my least reliable mining rig, and that's the 3090 because primarily of the memory modules on the back of the GPUs and just running in a farm setting, even if you go ahead and try to do like copper plates and you replace all the pads with the best that you can possibly do, they just don't seem to be able to function at their full hash rate all of the time unless you kind of got them like separated into their own climate controlled area. They're very frustrating cards to run in a farm, in my humble opinion. For me personally, for the ones I have, I'm actually looking at immersion cooling. We'll be covering that later. But what you see is a total bandwidth of 1000 gigabits per second. The RTX 3090 Ti card is also going to be the first PCIe Gen 5 compliant graphics card rocking a single 16 pin power connector that can supply up to 600 watts of power to the card. The new connector is rated for 600 watt power delivery. Is the Gen 5 compatible and not designed for legacy PCIe Gen 2 or Gen 3 cards. All cards with a PCIe the Gen 5 interface will come with three 8-pin to one 16-pin connector within the package. The Founders Edition is also going to utilize what seems to be an updated revision of the PG136 PCB board known as the PG136C. As for this feature set, the 3090 Ti 24GB graphics card rocks all the modern NVIDIA feature sets such as the latest NVENC encoder and NVD NVC DEC decoder, support for the latest API, second generation ray tracing cores, third gen tensor cores, and it packs all the modern RTX features such as DLSS, Reflex, Broadcast, Resizable Bar, Freestyle, Ansel, Highlights, Shadow Play, and G-Sync. And you can see it listed here. I think they have a few different ones popping up. Okay, no, right here. Boom, boom, boom. We covered the memory, which we've covered plenty of times here before. We've already done the predictions. You're looking at 450 watts on the TDP. Now, what I'm hearing in reports here as well is that, hold on, let me see if I can find it is that we have some of these reporting at up to uh, essentially a th 12, over 1200 watts of power on some of the third party boards. So some of these GPUs and especially in mining, you wanna be very careful right now are coming with dual 16 pin connectors. So basically a total po power draw capacity of 1200 watts. And you're not going to want that in a mining rig. You're talking about six, eight pin connectors for a single GPU. Here, you can see the EVGA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti King Kingpin hybrid graphics card rocks dual 16 pin connectors for over 1200 watts of power. I don't think you would be over 1200. The spec would mean it would need to be under 1200 uh, if I understand this correctly. But Anyways, compared to the Kingpin, the new Kingpin uh, hybrid rocks a dual tone black and silver color design, blah, blah, blah. The card features a hybrid cooling design featuring a large fan that cools the pure copper heat sink underneath the shroud alongside a 360 millimeter AIO radiator. Display outputs include the standard triple DBI and single HDMI output. 
Uh, what's interesting is that the PCB shot, which shows a new and updated design with gold traces and new power management system. There is a triple BIOS that should feature normal overclock and LN2 profiles, while ProBit support is also included, allowing you to analyze several GPU power metrics at once. The card is going to be extremely power hungry and will require dual 16 pin connectors to boot. This is only the second card to feature the dual 16 pin connectors and will require at least six eight pin connectors to adapt to the 16 pin cables. This allows for up to 1275 watts of power to be directed to the card through the actual TG, though the actual TGP would be closer to 550 watts and only custom BIOSes will unlock the higher power limit. This should be expected since EVGA is targeting LN2 and serious overclockers with the beast. And like straight up, if you're going to buy this thing, you better be ln 2 it because like what else is the point, right? This is absolute insanity. We're talking about basically a power requirement larger than probably 99% of the PC gamers power supplies total wattage, right? We're talking about 1,275 watts with custom BIOS. <laughs> and you don't want to mine on it because like, what are you going to do? 136 mega hash a second at 1,275 watts? No thanks. This is terrible. This is the worst I've seen. It's so bad. <laughs> but it's also so amazing. I want one. I'm not going to lie. I want one for sure. The change, the change of PCB also means that existing hydro copper water blocks will not be compatible with the new card, which means users who plan on upgrading the TI model will have to purchase brand new water blocks. The card is expected to be priced at very premium over the already outrageous 2000 us dollars price for the reference model. Now, Depending on like how these releases go in each third party manufacturer, you want to pay very, very, very close attention to how, uh, how many power connectors are on there. It's not like the two, eight pin to three, eight pin difference on the 3090, even though, even in that case, especially with mining Ethereum or a memory intensive, basically algorithm like Ethereum or something along those lines, you you still probably want to get like the dual pin 3090s in some cases. However, there are power delivery issues there too, and they're not as stable, meaning like you'll, you'll notice some power thro throttling, uh, just depending on the model and so on. But you definitely beyond a shadow, that's only a few, like mate, like under 200 Watts per eight pin, right? Like 175 Watts or something along those lines. This is a completely different beast, right? Like if you get a second 16 pin connector on there, you're jumping from 600 Watts to 1200 Watts like that. And no matter what you do, that means like whatever that power connector is running is going to draw that power higher up just in general, at least what I've noticed with the like dual eight pin to the triple eight pin, like on the 3090s and 3080s. So definitely, if you're going to try to mine on one of these, I would avoid dual 16 pin connectors just because you probably don't want to be dealing with also the amount of eight pins that are going to have to come off to power that thing. So let's talk about that, right? So obviously we asked, should you buy the RTX 3090 Ti for GPU mining? And it's pretty clear that the right now, if we're just looking at power consumption, the amount of eight pin required eight pins required in the potential for them and our estimations on what the hash rate's going to be at it really doesn't look like you really want to be purchasing this it's going to be a nightmare to run in a farm especially because i all all signs point to the to the 3090 as far as reliability in a farm setting where maybe you're getting up to like 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, like ambient temperature. It's going to make it really hard to run those unless you're like submerging them. You're going to have more basically power requirements. You're going to have just more connector requirements. Um, 
this isn't something that I would be purchasing and throwing in a farm. Now, if you're just wanting to have the fastest thing for your gaming PC, hey, I'm all for e -peen. That's great. I have a 3090 Ti. How cool is that? It's the fastest thing. Here's what it does on these different algorithms, and it's so fast. But as soon as you take that and want to throw it in an 8 GPU rig, I'm going, no, let's not do that, I don't think, at this point. Now, there are outside liars, uh, outlying, like, modifications like if you're going to just be like i said immerse immersing it into like mineral oil or potentially you know water blocking it then we could maybe have a discussion the amount of money you're going to spend on that though your roi is going to be terrible you know at that point i just say like just buy like four 1660 supers or five 1660 supers for the same price get around the same hash rate actually probably a little bit more and run those things into the dirt in the middle of summer in Texas and have no issues, right? So that's kind of where I'm looking at it for the 3090 Ti. That being said, we do have them in stock at the Houston Micro Center. There's six in stock for the EVGA for the Win 3 Black Edition. And there are 12 in stock for the For the Win 3 Ultra Edition. I am going to see if I can work up the funds to go ahead and purchase them. We're getting towards the end of the month, so funds are tight because this is when we start paying all of our power bills. This is when we start paying uh, all of our rent and all of that. So uh, I'm kind of a little leery about it. I did purchase two or four more 1660 Supers last night too when they dropped it. Like The average price was probably around $340 a pop. I know. It's up to you guys if you want to go ahead and purchase them. Look, I just want to keep expanding the farm. And to me, that seems like a good price right now. So I went ahead and purchased them. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show. Every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here. Or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.